Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Okay. Third John 2. That's a very familiar passage of scripture. Third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So this scripture is addressing prosperity in three realms. Man is a tripartite being you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live inside a physical container called flesh and blood. That's your human body. But the real you is the spirit being. And then your soul is your personality, and then you now live inside a physical container called human body. Um, God is interested in the prosperity of your spirit, the prosperity of your soul, and the prosperity of your physical body. Now, the prosperity of your spirit is what we call faith, which enables you to advance in the will and the purpose of God. Amen? The prosperity of your soul is called wisdom. This makes your advance in God smooth, profitable, and without grief. A person can advance in the will of God with grief. Paul said, I have, um, in Acts chapter 20, he said, I pray that I finish my assignment with joy. But not everyone finishes with joy. Some can finish, but with grief. Jacob was a man who finished with grief. Naomi was a woman who finished with grief. And people can advance in the will of God and prosper in their spirit and be denied of the prosperity of the soul and not have wisdom and have hiccups and grief and sorrow. But God wants you to prosper in your spirit. He wants you to prosper in your soul. Then he wants you to prosper in your body. The prosperity of the body is health. Health. Without which, both the prosperity of the spirit and the soul will be ineffective. A sick person cannot be effective in carrying out the will of God. And so, there is a prosperity of the spirit. I will not be looking at that today. That will be prosperity of the soul. I will not look at that today also, but that involves so many things, which includes emotional stability. You know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, The very God of peace himself, I pray that he sanctifies you totally, your spirit, your soul, and your body. God wants the three sanctified. He wants them blessed. He wants them as one, prosperous. He doesn't want you walking by faith, advancing in the will of God and seek. He wants you to advance. And that's why the Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom. Advance in wisdom. You must advance in the spirit in wisdom and have health. 
One of the prosperities of the soul is emotional stability. I, I want to say something, and with all respect to people who might have been concerned. If someone came to me and said she was raped by maybe a man of God, I would ask her if she is matured, not just above 18, matured and an adult, what do you want? If you want justice, go to the police, provide evidence, and he will go to jail. If you want compensation, there's a way to go. If you want vengeance, there's a way to go. If you want healing, there's a way to go. If you want comfort, there's a way to go. For example, if you want comfort, I will say, put it on social media. Now, what do you do on social media? People will sympathize with you, and you get comfort. A woman that loses her son, when people come to greet her, she gets comfort. She does not get healing. And they need the comfort, but more importantly, they need the healing. Only God gives the healing, and he doesn't give it on social media. There are procedures for it. So I ask, if you want healing, this is the way to go. If you want comfort, go to social media. If you want vengeance, which is not recommended, this is what to do. If you want justice, go to the police, but you have to tender evidence. If you want healing, this is where to go. You go to God, and this is what you must do. To go for vengeance, I will ask her, I hope you have not trampled on another man's will because you must come with equity. Otherwise, they, the fire will strike you first before it strikes the person you are, you, are, you, are, you are putting before that situation. Praise the Lord. So, God can heal that person and get emotionally stable. And part of the prosperity of the soul is a sound mind. A sound mind. A mind that is always above contemporary challenges. A mind that is always thinking ahead of crisis. A mind that sees good in every evil. A man that when his asses are lost, he knows the throne is near. A man <laughs> that when Satan strikes, he knows it's time for God to be glorified. That's a sound mind. That's, but that's the prosperity of the soul. We're not looking at that today. I want to look at the prosperity of the body. In Romans 8, verse 11, it says, If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells inside of you, then that same spirit will quicken and give life to your mortal body. God wants your mortal body strong. He needs it for the assignment. And let me tell you, when I'm done with this series, it doesn't matter what ailment a person has in his body, I guarantee you, you will be healed. In the name of Jesus the Christ, you will be healed. Amen. If it's a terminal ailment, you will be healed. Amen. God wants you healed. He wants you healthy. He wants you sound in your body. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, Moses advanced in age to 120 years. His eyes were not dim. His strength did not drop. That is the will of God. Not that you are 80, you are walking. No. When you are 80, you are strong, walking, energetically. 120, his eyes were not dim. His strength did not fail. That is the will of God. And that's your portion. Amen. And that's what's going to happen to you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, Caleb, 
In Joshua 14, from verse 6 to 14, went and said to the elders of Israel, he said, Moses, 40 years ago, promised me this mountain. Then that was 40 years before the wilderness experience started. Now I am 45 years. My strength for war has not changed from the way it was 40 years ago. He said, I was ready for war then. I am equally ready for war now. I'm ready to fight at age 85. I'm not retiring. I'm ready to go to battle. That is the will of God. He wants you. At age 85 to 40, there shouldn't be much difference. While Moses was pronouncing the blessings of the tribes of Israel in Deuteronomy 33, when he got to Asha, and I pronounce these blessings over you too, he said, Asha, blessed of the Lord. He said, possess the north, possess the south. He said, dip your feet in oil as your days. He said, let your shoes be like iron, your feet like brass. As your days increase, let your strength increase. As you get older, you will increase in wisdom. You will increase in grace. You will increase in favor. You will increase in strength. You will increase in health. The natural phenomenon is that as you get older, you get weaker and weaker. Here it says, as you get older, you get stronger and stronger. Amen. That is God's will. And that's what is going to happen to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the Bible says, rapture is coming. And we know all the signs point to the fact that rapture is coming. But rapture has not happened. But it is coming. Five to six thousand years ago, about five thousand years ago, a man by faith walked into rapture and experienced rapture. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, is it 5 or 6? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not taste death. A rapture, we will not die. We will be changed. Our bodies will change. Now, our spirit will not change. Our souls will not change. But our bodies will change. From what? From mortality to immortality. Then it will no longer be weak. It will no longer be tired. It cannot be corrupted. It cannot be sick. It will be strong. Now, 5,000 years ago, a man by faith experienced rapture. That means if we understand the faith mechanism, we can enjoy the redemption of our bodies while on earth. We only need to find out what to do. And we will do it. Amen. Now, he was translated and rapture had not come. We don't need to wait for rapture. To live well, live right, and live good. And when we are about to die, we release our faith to die. Because we cannot die. Then we say, like Simeon, oh God. God. Let your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Like Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith and have finished the race. Now it's time for me to depart. That's the proper way when you walk fully with God. Jesus walked on earth and that body not glorified was not sick. He slept, yes, we will sleep. But we can experience that post-rapture redemption of our bodies and experience that blessed state of prosperity of our human body. Live above sickness and live in divine health and be strong. And at age 90, we can jog. I've seen people in their 80s, in their 90s, go to do sports and they do sports better than young people of 30s. Praise Jesus. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? 
Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Praise Jesus. We say the prosperity of the body is health. We're looking at health, but there are other prosperities of the body. I'll just mention one or two. Do you know another prosperity of the body is burial? <laughs> the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 3, if a man live a hundred years, and he begat men and women, children and grandchildren, and had no burial, Bible says hey, an untimely death in the womb is better than him. What do you bury? You don't bury the spirit. You don't bury the soul. You bury the body. In Genesis 3.19, he said to Adam, From dust I formed you, and unto dust your body must return. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So when a man dies, if that body is blessed, if that body prospers, it will be buried. If that body is cursed, it will not be buried. Another prosperity of the body, I'm not talking of funeral. There's a difference between funeral and burial. Funeral is the party. Burial is the interment. God never recommended funeral for a burial. The Bible says when Moses died on the mountain, nobody could go there. He was alone on the mountain with God. No human being could climb there. The glory of God wouldn't let it. And Jamaica descended and buried him inside the rock. He had a burial. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Cremation is not burial. That's a cursed body. If a body is cremated, that body is cursed. If a body is dumped, that body is cursed. It didn't prosper. That flesh did not prosper. Said, I wish. Above every other thing that you may prosper, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus was anointed for burial. And he was what? Buried when he died. To confirm to you about that, I will need to give you one or two scriptures. Leviticus, I'm just laying the foundation today. I'll be taking one or two series where we will end up with the absolute power of God. That would change. Bible said to change your vile bodies. It will be released from this podium, and you will be healed. It doesn't matter what manner of sickness may be your body. You will be healed. You will be healed. You will be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God will be glorified in your mortal body. The Spirit of God will give mortal life to your mortal body, your cells, your tissues, your organs. Your systems will function perfectly and give glory to God. The Bible says everything gives glory to God, including yourselves. They'll be glorifying God. Your tissues, your organs, your kidneys will be praising God. Say, praise be to Elohim, the mighty creator God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Your kidneys will speak. Your heart will speak. Kalabaya. Your womb will speak. Your tissues, your organs, your eyes, they will speak in the name of Jesus. What will they be saying? They will be praising God. They'll be praising God. They'll say the great God Jehovah lives. Elohim, creator God lives. And he lives in me. He lives inside of me. He's glorified inside of me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let me not forget that the body that is not buried is cursed. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. I read verse 14. 
If a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire, both here and day, that there be no wickedness among you. That's cremation. It's a form of God's anger and judgment. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 9. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profane her father, she shall be burned with fire. When they cremate a dead man, it's a sign of anger and judgment from God. Most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, they are rotting in hellfire, burning with intense, unquenchable pain and agony. Joshua, chapter 7, if you read the story of Achan, that put the nation of Israel into trouble. The Bible says they cast stones on them and put fire on it, and they were burnt to death. That is also cremation. In Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, and I read from verse 18, it says, All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. For you are cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden on their feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed my land and slain my people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renounced. So it's a form of God's anger that a man is not buried. I didn't say funeral. Funeral is party. That is another sign of God's anger. He told Aaron when his two sons died. He said, don't mourn. When a man dies, even if he's 100 years, he must be mourned. If that man is not mourned, that body is cursed. He must be mourned. The Bible says, and Moses died, and Israel mourned him 40 days, 120 years. Have you noticed? It's when they start stop mourning that younger people started dying. In our days, when a 70-year-old man dies, it's grief. There is no music. Everywhere is quiet. It's, we call it a, you're about to call it a quofo. It's the death of a young person, 70. Now it's party. God told Aaron, your two sons have wronged me, and they have been slain dead. If you mourn them, he said, I will kill you. As a sign of my judgment, dress well. Put oil on your head. In fact, if possible, dance. As a sign of God's judgment. So when you see a funeral taking place, it's a sign of God's judgment. Anywhere you see them dancing and spraying that somebody has died, is judgment from God. That body is not mourned. By God's grace, I will live long, and you all live long, and we all live well. I write it for my children, don't worry. <laughs> They don't do any funeral for me. I want a burial. Mourn me. Praise God. That I may go to my fathers in peace. To all my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I'll give you another scripture. Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. It's quiet. I'll read from verse 18. From verse 18. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoi, Jehoiakim, King, the son of Jehosho, sorry, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, oh my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Oh Lord, oh his glory. He shall be buried with, no bur with the burial of an ass, drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry. Lift up thy voice in Bashan. Cry from the passages, for all thy lovers are destroyed. So he said, for you, he said, they will not lament, they will not mourn. It's a sign of God's anger when a man dies. And all they do is think of party. God is demonstrating anger. You know, in Romans... He says that God gives reprobate mind to the gay and the lesbian. That they believe what they are doing is right. 
Yet, it's a sign of God's judgment against humanity. When a man is gay, when a man is a lesbian, he has been condemned before the Almighty. God has turned his back on him. God now makes him believe he's right. Yet, his mind is worse than a beast. Because no beast will do that. When you see the gay and lesbian, they are less than humans. They are not even human. They are less than animals. But they believe they are okay. God makes it look that way. So that they can continue in folly and reprobate. It's a sign of God's anger and judgment. You must understand, when certain things happen, you must be able to interpret them well that this is God getting angry. When you see them, they even did procession on the streets in America. That's God showing that he's angry. But people don't see that way. They call it fundamental human rights. But the Bible says it is a sign of God's anger. When you see so much funeral and they're not wailing and none is mourning, it's a sign of God's anger. When you see a man die and is buried and thrown into a pit like an ass, is a sign of God's judgment. When you see a man die and his body is cremated, it's a sign that that body is cursed. But that's not what we're looking at. I'm looking at health in the prosperity of the body. The body has about seven forms of prosperity. I want to look at health and healing. Maybe some other time we'll look at burial and some other forms of prosperity of the body. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.